This video is intended to be a broad overview of some of the capabilities of SOLIDWORKS that are useful for cabinetry design. Here you can see on the screen I have a set of frameless kitchen cabinets. And I want to walk you through quickly some of the features that I use to set this up and then talk about some of the deliverables that we can create out of here. Now a lot of our customers that do woodworking work with cabinetry, they're coming from 2D CAD tools. So I'd like to point out here that to, to begin my design, I started off with a simple 2D elevation and depth plan. So I have here an elevation plan that's basically representing the shape that I want each of these cabinets to fit inside. And I basically just think of them as modules. Um, when I'm working at the assembly level, like I am here in SOLIDWORKS, I'll consider each of those cabinets either to be its own part or its own sub-assembly. So I'll do my layout in 2D and then, and then work on the individual cabinets to bring those out into 3D. If we open up one of the example cabinets here, we can take a look at it. And we can see I do have multiple different configurations represented here. So I have a version with double doors, a version with single doors, a version with no doors, so we can see what's going on inside there. And basically the way I constructed this was just with my simple SOLIDWORKS extrude commands. Just starting off again here with a um, basic elevation sketch that shows the overall profile I wanted. And then if we want, we can kind of roll back through time and see the modeling process here, how I uh, created each side and did the appropriate reliefs and everything for the joinery. And just built this up piece by piece. Now, one of the benefits of modeling these things in SOLIDWORKS is everything is parametric. So if we need to make modifications down the line, we can simply update our model. And some of the ways I built in some of those parametrics here are for instance, on my shelf spacing, I use some of the options in SOLIDWORKS for patterning. So this is an intelligent pattern for the hole spacing in the shelves. So I can set rules such as I want a shelf every 16 inches. And if I ever adjust the size of the cabinet, we'll see those spacings actually be maintained. Okay, but we can go ahead and take a look back over the assembly, show you this in action now. So here I have multiple different cabinets that were all kind of created off the same basic cabinet. And if I want to show internally here, we can see uh, the internal hole spacings and everything there based on the overall cabinet shape. I can actually activate that elevation plane at any point and start making modifications to the design, such as increasing the height here overall. And we'll see that when I reach these certain breakpoints based on those rules I set, we'll automatically get additional shelves and holes added in at the spacings I've specified. So there's lots of potential for automation and anytime you might need to create a variant of your design, that process should be very streamlined once you have one of the base CAD models created. In terms of the types of outputs we can produce, if we want to focus on manufacturing, we can think of having a stripped out model. Here I added some additional detail just for visual purposes, but I can have a, a stripped out model that would represent just the components that need to get manufactured. And we can produce our familiar types of outputs from this, such as 2D drawings uh, that dictate the overall dimensions and specifications of the overall unit assembled, or of course detailed drawings of the individual cabinets and individual components there. There's also nesting solutions for uh, programming CNC routers and that type of equipment within SOLIDWORKS. We have products like CAMWORKS for the CNC programming and NestingWorks is a 2D nesting software to help break up all these individual components onto the individual sheets. So once the 3D model is created, creating the 2D content, the drawings for documentation, and the manufacturing G-code and those types of things should be very straightforward. But a lot of the reason that we see customers in interior design and the architectural areas going to 3D now is for photo rendering. So to go the other direction here, I can add in even more detail, add in some detail about my environment. I can set up particular camera views, which will basically be like virtual snapshots of my design from a particular orientation. And I can use the rendering tools that are built into SOLIDWORKS. There's a rendering tool built into SOLIDWORKS Professional. What you're getting is the ability to virtually see your design in a, in a photorealistic manner. So I can load up here this rendering preview window, which is going to let me take a look at this with more realistic lighting. Like here, in, in this case, I have actually a light under uh, above the sink that I have activated. And it allows me to quickly test things, like we have a built-in material library here with different woods and types of countertops and things like that. 
You can even scan in your own textures and create your own textures from samples of material. But here, if I want to try, for instance, a different countertop, I could take a granite appearance and just drop that in onto my model and place it, and we'll see it update in the photo rendering preview with the more realistic lighting and everything from the environment. So you can use these to produce very high quality images, marketing images um, that can be used for websites, portfolios, or helping to bid jobs and, and get jobs during the proposal process. So in summary here, I just want to go back through some of the topics we talked about. Um, we looked at how to create things like these cabinet layouts in 3D, just a few of the steps that might be useful. Um, I should have mentioned we can import also 2D DXF files. So if you do have legacy data from AutoCAD or you have floor plan layouts that you need to bring in, you can import in AutoCAD 2D DWG DXF files and bring them into 3D. But really this video was intended to be a broad overview. There'll be a second video following up here that'll focus in a little bit more on some of the individual details of modeling some cabinetry in SOLIDWORKS. We'll look at a framed cabinetry example in the next video. And we'll also look at how to automate some of the more monotonous tasks.